Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I put together 10 of my favorite St. Patrick's Day DIYs, all with a little bit of a coastal twist. So let's get started. The first one we're going to use some of this crushed glass in green from the Dollar Tree and one of those little wooden shamrocks with the little rays like leaves or hearts on them. And we're going to DIY this, kind of make it look like a stained wood and like crushed like sea glass at Shamrock. And it really turns out stunning. So the first thing we need to do is stain the Shamrock. So I'm just going to use Antique Wax by Waverly and a brush so that I can kind of get down in there and we're going to stain this wood. One great thing about these plain wood items from the Dollar Tree is that they stain really, really nice. You would never know that it was such an inexpensive sign, only $1.25. So just kind of going all over. I didn't really want to do the top parts, but it's kind of inevitable. So I'm just going to go ahead and stain everything. My plan here is to do the crushed sea glass look on the little heart shape, the leaf shapes on top, but leaving that beautiful stain on the back of the shamrock. So up next, I'm just going to distress it with ivory um, acrylic and a chunky brush just to kind of give me kind of a lighter stain, more of a kind of a driftwood feel. And just wiping off the excess with a baby wipe just to lighten it up a little bit. And if you don't feel it's distressed enough, you can always go over it again. And don't be afraid to distress. You can always wipe it off if you get too much on there. And I'm just kind of working with it until I'm happy with it. Now we can get started on the crushed glass. They have this like couple different colors. I think I've seen it. I've used it in blue before, but I thought green would be beautiful for St. Patrick's Day. So just kind of dumping this out so we can get started with that. I need to find a way to attach that to the shamrock sign um, and glue it on. So I thought this tacky glue, I also get this from the Dollar Tree, would be really good. I've used it to glue down stones a lot for other DIYs, and it's a nice thick glue. It works really well to glue down something as heavy as the rocks. So I'm just gonna go over the little leaves, the little raised part, and do a thick layer of that tacky glue. I think that's why it works so well is because it's so thick. And then I'm just gonna start sprinkling on that sea glass, trying to get as good coverage as I can. Just kind of pressing that down into the glue. And then I like to spray over the top with some of that spray adhesive also from the Dollar Tree. I find that it helps things stay down. So we're going to do that here with all the leaves. Tacky glue, the stones, and then the spray adhesive on top. I'm trying to make sure that I don't really glue any to the background of the shamrock that I have stained. Only to the front parts. And I really like the look of this. This is really fun. I have never, um, this was the first time I think I crafted with this glass. And I love to try all of the craft products from the Dollar Tree. Now I let it sit. And as you can see, it stayed on really well. I was expecting more to fall off, but it totally didn't. But I'm just going to kind of patch in any little holes that I see, mainly along the edges. Just using some of that spray adhesive as I go wiping off any excess so it doesn't like really show up on the final product. Okay, now I wanna kinda layer that on another sign. I'm gonna use this wood round that I got at the Target Dollar Spot, but you could totally use the wood rounds from the Dollar Tree as well. It would totally work. This has got like a white, like kind of beachy vibe on one side and like a chalkboard on the other side. So I thought this side would be really good background for that. I like to layer the Dollar Tree signs just to make them look a little bit thicker and more substantial. So I'm going to kind of put the little shamrock on there like that. I was kind of seeing if the holes on both signs would line up. 
just securing that with hot glue. And then I kind of want to take some of that Dollar Tree twine to make the hanger kind of go through both sides. So I'm going to use like just one of these large like upholstery needles to try to string that in there. That way it'll be easier to get through there to make a new hanger here. And that kind of takes care of the holes in the shamrock as well. I'm just gonna tie the knots in the front. I always like to hang my signs like that. I find they hang flatter against the wall when you do it like that. Tying off both sides. Then I wanted to kind of make a bow for the hanger just to make it look really pretty. So I'm gonna use some ribbons from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use some burlap ribbons and some of this beautiful like palm leaf print um, ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I think that's so pretty. And then I also have um, some little burla burlap ribbon that has like the ivory um, trim on it. And I'm gonna use those three together. We're just gonna make a really simple expo for this. Just kind of dress it up. And I love that palm print um, with the green glass for St. Patrick's Day. So just gonna line those up, alternating the palm in the middle and just tying this off with a zip tie. I love expos, they're so easy. Um, anybody can do them and they really add a fun touch to your DIY. It's just kind of arranging that and cutting off the rest of the zip tie. And then I'm just gonna use some of that twine to tie it onto the hanger. Just another little fun detail for this little St. Patrick's Day DIY. I love the coastal vibe of it with the different woods and the stained glass, but you know, you could use this for any style of decorating. It would look great for St. Patrick's Day. So just tying that twine off. And there you go. We have our first St. Patrick's Day DIY. I love this. This is definitely one of my favorites. And I can't wait to decorate with this. So fun. Okay, our next DIY, we're gonna start with one of these little tinsel shamrocks from the Dollar Tree. You guys know I love to use the tinsel products basically as I like the cage underneath because I can always DIY with it. Now, this has like a lot of tinsel wrapped around it. So you kind of have to take your time. You can cut it. I found that this one was so tightly woven, it was almost easier just to unwind it then to cut it, like a lot of times on the cages, it's easier just to cut it. But this one, you gotta just kind of take your time and just take it all off. <laughs> and of course, it's gonna make a little bit of a mess. So just going around that last section of that last leaf, and then what I wanna do is use that cage to make a rope shamrock. Um, with that nautical rope from the Dollar Tree in white. It's gonna look very coastal with a white rope, but it could also go with for other decorating styles as well. After much effort, we have a plain cage. This is a rope I'm gonna use. It is the six foot, so it is the fairly thick white rope. I love decorating with this. You can make just about anything with the Dollar Tree rope, the white or the brown. So I'm just gonna cut off the tape on the end and we can start decorating with this. Now I'm working on a silicone mat, so what I'm gonna use is hot glue to glue that down. I don't really have to worry about um, it sticking on anything because it won't stick to the silicone mat. And so I'm gonna start with the stem first, do a bead of hot glue and that rope covers the cage really nicely. And then I'm gonna use that same piece and go up and go ahead and do the top leaf of the shamrock, just gluing that down. And that wide rope really um, worked well because it hid all of those tabs on the cage. I didn't really have to cut those off or anything, yet this like covered it nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off there. That looks like a good place to cut it and um, glue that down. And then we can use the rest of the rope to cover the other leaves. So just starting right here along the stem, I'm gonna just go around and glue around in that heart shape. I always forget that hearts make perfect shamrocks and that I put away all of my Valentine's Day um, DIY stuff and then I'm like, why did I put that away? I can use that to make shamrocks. <laughs> I 
gluing down that leaf and then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the next one. Now I'm not going to just leave it um, like this, but you totally could. You could, you totally could just have a rope shamrock and you could do a lot of different things with that. You could hang it on a door, hang it on your wall. Um, I'm going to go ahead and layer it on another sign just to kind of make it a more um, finished project and kind of add to it a little bit. Now, as you can see, the hot glue gets a little messy on the back, but what I'm going to do is just melt it with my heat gun. And then I wanted to use some of this ombre tote bag. Um, you guys have seen me use it before. I've used the pink part of this bag actually for one of my Valentine's Day DIYs. Um, using the pink, um, it looked like a pink fishnet for a background for some XOXO letters. But this time what I want to use is like the ivory part. And I love this. I think this makes a great fishnet to craft with. That fishing net that they carry every summer at the Dollar Tree is like a really big um, fishing net. I don't find it very works very well for um, crafting with, but I love this. If you see these bags, pick them up. They are so versatile. And what I'm going to do is just cover the back of each leaf with the fishing net. Just gluing that down around the edges and then I can trim up all the excess later. I'm just using some of those silicone cake tools from the Dollar Tree to spread that out. And that way I also don't burn myself with the hot glue. And it's just going to be a nice leaf background with that. I think that's going to match with the rope really well. So then once I get it glued down, I'm just using my scissors to cut that as close to the frame as I can so that you can't see any of the excess. And then what I'm going to do is continue using that bag, that same exact bag, to cover the rest of it. When you kind of like cut all the fabric out around the handles, you can get quite a bit of fabric. You can kind of stretch it. As you can see, that one still has a little bit of pink on it. But I'm just going to kind of glue it down and cut it out to size and you won't be able to see any of that. I wish it was all white. That would be really cool. And if you can't find that, you could also use like the little mats that go underneath the, the, the rugs, the rug liners um, would really kind of work well for that too, about the same size of netting. Now the sign that I'm going to layer it on is one of these chalkboards from the Dollar Tree. I love crafting with these because they're a great size. Um, they're really sturdy. They don't bow. They're rather thick. And so I thought this was going to be just about the right size for a um, St. Patrick's Day DIY. It does have all of this chalkboard writing on the back. And so I'm just going to use some cheap uh, Dollar Tree contact paper just to cover the back, just to give me a more finished product. Um, whenever your back looks nice, I think your DIYs look nicer. So I'm just going to poke some holes in there and then use a sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree to cut off all the excess. This contact paper is pretty thick, so it cuts really well with that. And I've been having trouble finding the sanding sponges at the Dollar Tree for months and months and months. And now suddenly all of my Dollar Trees have started getting them back in stock. Thank goodness, I really needed some new ones. Now I'm going to work on the back since it is a nice blank canvas. The only issue with these chalkboards is always trying to get that tag off the back. So using some heat and a scraper to try to get that off. And then it does kind of leave like a sticky residue. So I'm gonna use a little Goo Gone on there as well. And we have a nice blank canvas. Now I'm gonna cover this with burlap as a background, but I didn't really want the background, like, you know, you can kind of see through the burlap because it has holes in it. Um, I didn't want that to be black. I wanted it to be green for St. Patrick's Day. So I'm just using Christmas green color and just giving a very quick, easy coat over the back just to kind of make it have a green background. It probably wasn't necessary, but it was just a little extra step that um, made me love this project even more. And so I'm just going to use a scrap piece of burlap I have. I like to buy the burlap at Walmart. It's really inexpensive, like $2 and something a yard. And oh my gosh, you can use it for just about anything. I'm going to Mod Podge mine down. Since I'm using fabric, I'm doing a rather thick layer of Mod Podge. And then I'm going to simply lay the burlap down. 
It is a little bit larger than I need, but I can always go ahead and trim that up later. Just making sure it is smooth and glued down. Now, if you look really closely at it, you can see the green background. <laughs> see? <laughs> that's what I was talking about. And I think that's going to make a really fun background for that little rope shamrock that we made. I just have to cut off the excess burlap. And burlap is very forgiving too. You know, if you get it cut fairly close, you can kind of pull out some threads and kind of make it look like it's supposed to be frayed instead of um, not wanting it to be frayed. Just using my sharpest fabric scissors. A lot of you guys have asked about these scissors. Uh, they are, ooh, what is the name of them? Singer, Singer fabric scissors. And they are really sharp, they work really good. I actually got them at my local grocery store. But I know, I think I have them in my Amazon shop because I think they do have them on Amazon as well. So as you can see, the shamrock fits really nicely on this side sign. And I'm just gonna start attaching it with hot glue to the burlap sign, kind of centering it. It's okay if it hangs off the sides a little bit. But I'm just kind of gluing one section at a time to make sure that my hot glue doesn't set up before I move on to the next section. Now I'm just gonna glue down my leaves. I want this to be flat on there and attached, all of it glued down. And again, you could use this rope shamrock without a sign behind it, but I really kinda liked the layered look and the contrast it gave me with that like fishing net behind the rope. So we got that all glued down. I did have a little spot over to the left that didn't really have anything there. I thought that was a great opportunity to make like a little sign, just to personalize this a little bit. So what I'm gonna use is some of this craft wood from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna cut that wood down to size to give me a perfect size sign for this. And this is the craft wood that I'm using. I'm just gonna take it to my saw and cut it down to size, give it a quick sand. Then I thought we would paint this green and make just a cute little St. Patrick's Day sign um, just to kind of fill that area. So I'm using that same Christmas green acrylic paint and doing one coat over that raw wood. I'm also gonna go over it with some ivory and a chunky brush and just to stress it slightly to kind of go with my coastal farmhouse vibe. And then if you want your sign to look really good, you can use your Cricut. I am just going to use my white Sharpie pink pen and do a script lucky on there. Just kind of making the letters go off the sides. Super easy, you could do whatever kind of a font you want. I just kind of wanted to do a cursive on this. I'm just kind of filling in any areas that got missed by my paint pen. And we have a cute little sign here to go on the front of our shamrock. I like the white Sharpie um, paint pens. I think they work pretty well. I have been using some other ones that are available in my Amazon shop um, that I like even better, I think. They do work pretty well. And I didn't think I had it distressed enough, so once I get it on there, I'm gonna distress it a little bit more heavily with the ivory. Wiping off the excess with a baby wipe until it looks nice and distressed. Now I'm just gonna attach that to the burlap with some hot glue. Super cute and a functional space over there to put something. Now to give it a little bit of a coastal touch, I thought a starfish would be great. These are some real starfish. I get these on Amazon, they are available in my shop. But if you have some from the Dollar Tree, that would be really cute as well. You might need to give them an, a coat of ivory first. These are kind of already that bleached ivory color. And then I'm just going to reattach the hanger um, by poking a hole through all the fabric and stuff that I had on there. And just using some twine to tie that off. Again, just tying the knot in the front. And that's all there is to this DIY. I think it turned out really cute. I love the little starfish touch on there. And I love all of the little coastal vibes to this. What do you guys think about this one? And here it is, our little rope and fishing net shamrock complete with some burlap and a starfish. This is perfect for a coastal St. Patrick's Day. You can kind of make any holidays um, coastal if you try hard enough. 
Okay, up next, I wanted to make a St. Patrick's Day wreath for my front door using some of the nautical rope jute in the eight foot from the Dollar Tree and one of the little shamrock or wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. Now, this turned out absolutely beautiful, but have some patience with this project or you're going to do it because it does take a little bit of work. What I want to do is use that Dollar Tree rope to um, do like a woven rope pattern on this which you're going to cover all of it since you have the different um wires on the wreath form you're going to weave the rope in between them so i attach it to the bottom right here um, i thought that'd be a good starting point and then i am going to start weaving it through now what i did is i went under the one in the middle and then over the one on the end forming a woven pattern. Now it's okay if the final project, you do see some of the green wire. It's just gonna kind of show off the detail of the weaving. So just trying to get it through there fairly straight. Um, my advice is to leave the plastic tape on the end of the rope. Otherwise your rope is going to fray while you're doing all of this weaving. So I go over and alternate the second row so instead of going under, I went over and then I just keep alternating that woven pattern. I hope that makes sense. So I went over, under, and then over the other side. I'll pull it through and then come back through. And this time I go over the middle part and then under the, um, the inside part. So you're just kind of alternating. One time you go under, and one time you go over, and then you just kind of push it tight on there. You're gonna need a way more rope than you think you're gonna need for this project. Um, but I will try to add up how many packages of rope that we used here. So this is the first one. <laughs> and keep working until you run out of rope, cause you will, and then you can start the next one. Just make sure when you run out of rope, you're gonna do that on the back of the reef. The reason I know that you need to leave the tape on there is because I've done this style of wreath before for Halloween and the first time I tried taking the tape off thinking I'm, oh, I don't need any tape on here. It like frayed a lot because you're doing a lot with that rope, pulling it in and out. Whenever you get to like a cross section, just try to get it like as tight as you can in that section to get like maximum coverage. You always wanna keep that tight. So what I do is just hot glue the end to the back, like kind of right in the middle, cutting off the excess rope. And then I can start my next rope right there where I left off. And just make sure that you continue the same exact pattern um, like you're starting in the right spot and going over the right bars. And you really can't tell where you start and stop on this. And again, this is just a time consuming project. If you wanted to do this in front of the television while you're watching your favorite YouTuber or um, TV show, um, I would advise that because your arms are gonna be tired because there's so much weaving, but the end result is beautiful. I love it. So that's about how far two packages go. And we can keep on weaving. I have the power to speed this way up. It makes it look super easy. <laughs> and three packages gets about halfway through. So I'm guessing I probably used a total of six packages here. Four, five. Definitely gonna need at least six here. Actually, I think I use seven because then I have to go down the stem of it. Once I get to the bottom, there's only two wires there. And so I couldn't really weave it. So I just wind it around it. And that's how far that package got me. See, it almost got me to the end. And just opening another package and finishing it off. Just kind of gluing it to the, yourself when you get to the end, just trying to cover up all of the exposed wreath form. And now we have a rope covered shamrock. I think it's so pretty. I'm just gonna burn off all the fuzzies with a lighter to get any strings and just kind of clean it up a little bit. 
I always like to do that with my rope projects. I think it just cleans things up a little bit. Now I want to decorate this for coastal, but I want to decorate it coastal um, just kind of minimally. So I'm going to use that same ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I love this. I really wish I could find more of this at the Dollar Tree, this palm print. And I'm just going to make a cute little hanger for my wreath with that. It's a nice wide rib ribbon, so I think it's going to work well as a hanger. Just going to hot glue it here to the back. And kind of make a loop ribbon to hang this with. Looping it and then gluing down the excess ribbon. Now I am going to decorate this with a few coastal touches. Um, but nothing too crazy. But it's your wreath. You can decorate yours as much as you want. So I thought like starfish, maybe some seashells would be great. So I'm going to use a starfish over here. Again, these are the Amazon starfish that I get. They're the real ones, um, but you could always use the ones from the Dollar Tree. They're about the same size. And I'm just kind of decorating kind of one side a little bit. And so I'm gonna use a seashell from the Dollar Tree and then also a sand dollar. I get those sand dollars on Amazon as well. I always have all that stuff linked in my Amazon shop below if you're interested in them. And those are like real um, sand dollars too, but you could always use the ones from the Dollar Tree. When I made this, I was completely out of the Dollar Tree ones. <laughs> and then I wanted to use some more of that ribbon to kind of make a little bow here for the bottom. So I am just going to loop that like that with two little loops and then kind of tie that together to give a fun little bow. Just kind of like you could tie shoelaces like that, I guess. Just making sure the tails are facing the same direction. And this isn't a wired ribbon, but it is nice and thick and silky. And so it really tied well like that. And then I thought we could just kind of decorate the stem of the shamrock, kind of like crooked at an angle, just to add a little bit of fun. And then I'm just gonna dovetail the edges of the tails of that ribbon. Like I said, I just wanted to decorate it a little bit coastal, but not too much. But if you wanted to add like lots more seashells and stuff to yours, that would be really cute as well. I just really didn't wanna cover up the braided rope because it's so pretty. Now to cover that middle section of the bow where it was white, I just use another Dollar Tree seashell and glue that on there. I get that all done and then I decide I don't really like exactly where I put it. <laughs> this is me being extra. And so I use some heat to pull it off and glue it down a little bit lower on the stem. I don't know why, but I, that's where I wanted it. <laughs> and this is how it looks hanging on my door for St. Patrick's Day. It's a lot of work to weave with that rope, but look at the finished product. It is beautiful and it definitely doesn't look like it was made with supplies from the Dollar Tree. Okay, up next we're going to do a another Coastal St. Patrick's Day sign using one of those signs from the Dollar Tree. And then I want to layer my signs again, so I'm just going to use a square sign I had left over from Christmas. Doesn't really matter what it is. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint that, that Christmas green color. And that's just going to be kind of my background. Doesn't really matter that I had all that glitter and stuff on there because I'm also going to layer the burlap that we used earlier. This is just burlap I have from Walmart. You could always use the burlap rolls from Walmart as well or the burlap bags they now have at the Dollar Tree. And I was kind of going for that same feel where you have the burlap with the green background, but this time I kind of wanted to cut it down so it kind of had like a green border around the edges. So I'm just cutting the burlap down the sides, trying to cut along the grain of the burlap. And then um, I like the green sign, but I do want to distress it a little bit. So I'm going to distress it with a little ivory. Just kind of working in one direction. I love using those chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree. Sometimes they lose a lot of bristles, but sometimes they work well. 
just going around the edges because you're not going to be able to see the middle part. So there's really no need for that to kind of give me a coastal background for this sign. Now to attach the burlap, I'm just going to do a thick layer of Mod Podge again and glue down the burlap. It's going to kind of tie it together to that other project we made with the rope and the fishnet. But a little bit different because the green border is visible around the edges. And then I want to take that shamrock sign that we got at the Dollar Tree and layer that on top of it. But I do want to kind of give it a little bit of a coastal makeover as well. So just using my Cricut brayer to make sure I got that glued down straight. Now see how this sign kind of looks a little bit coastal? This is the one that has like the green galvanized metal shamrock. Just gonna pop that off. I like the colors on this. This is almost exactly the same background image that's on the one that I just used for my Shamrock Cafe sign for my coffee bar for St. Patrick's Day. Um, that one had a burlap ribbon in the middle. If you use that one, that one would actually be about perfect. I didn't really like the bright green galvanized metal here. So I thought I would just clean up the back on that to get the glue off of it. And then I could just use the silver side. I thought it was gonna go way better with my decor than that bright green. Just trying to clean up any areas there from glue, kind of distressing all over, just to kind of make it look less like paper and more like a weathered painted shamrock. Really distressing the dark green areas pretty heavily. And I like to do that. It always makes the signs look a little bit better from the Dollar Tree. I'm also gonna go ahead and distress it with a little ivory as well, just to help kind of go with that painted vibe. Even though the printed paper is pretty, I just kind of want it to look a little bit more homemade. Now, there was a small area there where I um, didn't, I had a little glue that was exposed there. So I'm just gonna use a little tiny piece of burlap just to make a little, clover stem because it didn't really have one and then just hot glue the galvanized metal shamrock leaves right on top. Then I decided that I kind of wanted to distress this with a little antique wax by Waverly. It's probably too late at this point because I already had the burlap on there, but I'm being careful just because um, there was a lot of brown distressing on that sign that we're gonna attach to the front. And I just kind of want the colors to coordinate a little bit better together. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and take some twine Tying that off on the top of the shamrock, we can use these existing hangers to hang the whole sign. That way I won't have to worry about covering up those holes when we attach that to the back sign. And about the thickness of two Dollar Tree signs, I really like that well. It um, makes it kind of more of a normal depth sign. So as you can see on this square sign that I had left over, it's gonna overlap the sides slightly, but that's okay. And we're just gonna glue the shamrock it down. It kind of looks really cute like that. Um, I want to take it a little bit further and add some more coastal touches to it though. So I thought some seashells from the Dollar Tree would be really fun because they're kind of, you know, the same shape as the little petals on the clover. So I'm just going through my stash, trying to find six of them that are about the same color and about the same size. And I couldn't really find one that I wanted for the middle. Um, and so I'll show you what I end up using. A sand dollar, I had one just the right size, but it would be kind of cute without it as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that sand dollar down. Again, I got that one on Amazon. All of the seashells are from the Dollar Tree. Just hot gluing those down onto the galvanized metal shamrock. Just hot gluing around the edges and securing those all down. And this is kind of an outside the box shamrock with all the seashells, but I love the coastal touches and I think it turned out really fun. Okay, we got all those glued down. And I'm loving this project so far. What do you guys think? And then there's me 
saying, well, my greens don't really match. So use a little bit of that Christmas green um, to distress the green stripe on there just to make sure my signs kind of match together a little bit better. And then also distressing them with a little bit of ivory just to brighten it up a little bit. Okay, I got to this point and then I decided to add some nautical rope, some of the jute kind that we just used for the reef to kind of frame this out a little bit. Again, anytime um, I frame out the Dollar Tree signs like this, I think I they look a little bit thicker and I'm usually happier with them. So I'm just gonna start along the bottom and I'm gonna hot glue that to the edges and just use a package of rope and go all the way around. It's gonna provide another little coastal touch to this and make it look a little bit thicker and more finished as well. So just wrapping that around, gluing one section at a time, making sure that my hot glue it does not dry. And this is how it turned out, just kind of gluing the corner to itself down there. And this is the final project. It's really rustic, really fun for a coastal St. Patrick's Day. And I love the little sand dollar on there. I think that looks really fun. Okay, on to the next St. Patrick's Day DIY. But first, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about my private Facebook group. I always have a link below. I also have a Facebook page. If you, um, you're going to want to follow that too because you're going to get different content from that. And I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at Crafty Beach on YouTube on all of those. And I'd love to see you over there. Okay, our next DIY, I wanted to make just a cute little kind of coastal leprechaun sign. So I'm going to use one of these bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. I thought it was a perfect size because I just kind of want to use the shamrock head for this sign to do a cute little sign. So I like the bamboo finish. I do want to kind of distress it a little bit with some antique wax by Waverly, just kind of staining it a little bit darker. And I wasn't sure if you could stain that wood, but actually it stained really beautifully. Just because I'm going to be doing some other DIYs that's going to be displayed with this, um, that I'm going to kind of do that medium wood grain. Now, whenever I, as you can see, I went over it with a baby wipe at the end. It kind of made it a little bit lighter. And then I'm using one of these little leprechauns from the Dollar Tree and just pulling off all of his body. This is the one with like the brown hair. I didn't think he was quite as loud as the little leprechaun that had the orange hair. But I'm also going to pull out these little rivets here just so they're not quite as obvious. And he fits perfectly on that little cutting board. I love DIYing with those. I was really happy to find a bunch of those recently at Dollar Tree. Haven't seen those in a while either. So his hat is got the hole in it. So I'm just going to trim it down a little bit, rounding the corner um, to make him fit well. And then I was worried about the holes in the beard. Because you can see those, but I couldn't really trim that off. <laughs> so I'm going to start hot gluing him down to the sign. I don't really want to overlap the bottom. This is going to be a standing sign for my St. Patrick's Day DIYs. And I'm just going to glue the little felt leprechaun to the sign. Now, since I couldn't really cover those up, I thought a little antique wax by Waverly in each one of those holes was going to kind of stain the wood behind it brown. And that worked really well to hide the little holes in his beard. And I never know what to do with these little felt creatures from um, the Dollar Tree. And so I was really f excited to find something that I could DIY with it. I do remove the bright green, a little shamrock up there. I'm going to decorate that with something a little bit more coastal since we're doing coastal St. Patrick's Day today. And I thought a sand dollar on his hat would be really cute, but I kind of wanted it to look like gold. And so I'm just gonna paint the sand dollar with some gold metallic acrylic paint to kind of make it look like a gold coin, but it's also gonna be a sand dollar. I thought that would be really fun just to bring a little coastal touch to this DIY. And again, you could totally use the sand dollars from the Dollar Tree if you have them. I can't wait for the short living items to come out of the Dollar Tree. It's like a holiday around here. <laughs> soon, soon, soon. 
So I thought that'd be really cute on the little hat like that. And then I want it to be a standing sign. So I'm just gonna glue, this is a giant Jenga block that I have left over from five below. And this is how it turned out. Our little coastal leprechaun. I think he's really cute. No glitter or anything on him. So he goes really well with my decor. Okay, I wanted to make a another kind of a standing sign um, for my St. Patrick's Day decorations. So I'm using one of these little pot of golds from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to stain the whole pot with Antique Wax by Waverly. Kind of have to use a brush because you kind of got to get in around all those letters and stuff like that. But this stained is so pretty. So a good coat of Antique Wax by Waverly and then just going around with paper towel and wiping off the excess. And look at that beautiful wood grain on there. Now I wanted to paint the word lucky so that you can kind of read that against the stained wood, going over it with some ivory paint. And just a makeup sponge, trying not to get too much of that on my stained wood in the back. It can always be a little tricky trying to paint those signs. Now I wanted to um, make, this is gonna kind of be a standing sign as well, but I wanted to do something more creative than the pot of gold and I thought we would use seashells um, instead of gold coins. I thought that would be really fun coastal touch. And so these are actually like seashells that I found at the beach. They're really bleached out, but I think they're gonna work really well for this project. Cause what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna go around and start gluing them down. I kind of found ones that were just the right size to fit the pattern that was already on there. But I'm not gonna leave them this white color. We will go back and paint these gold to make them look like gold coins. And this is really fun. Just another idea of how you can bring a coastal beachy vibe into just about anything. So I got the first row glued on and now I can start gluing on the second row kind of overlapping like they're all kind of piled in the pot of gold. And normally you would think, you know, a pot of gold would be black, but look how pretty it is stained wood. I'm so glad I decided to stain it instead of paint it. So I got pretty good coverage there with seashells and everything is glued down. Now I wanted the Lucky to be green. The reason I painted it ivory first was to kind of give me a brighter background. Um, I did, cause it was stained kind of dark. So just using some of the Christmas green and going over that with a baby wipe, trying to be careful again, not to get too much on the background. Brought a little bit of green into this DIY. And then the seashells, I told you we're gonna paint them gold. So I'm using the gold acrylic paint and a brush to get in there. Look how pretty the seashells look painted like that. You can see all the little stripes on there. So pretty. And you can use whatever seashells you've got. The, my Dollar Trees always have a pretty good selection of seashells. And isn't that a fun little touch? I love this DIY, I thought it was really cute. Also painting like behind them, um, any of the areas that were stained, just getting in there with that metallic gold. And I love working with the metallic acrylic paints. They really turn out really nice and shiny. Now I kind of wanted to make a stand um, that wouldn't be visible. So I'm just gonna glue two of those little Jenga blocks from five below onto the back of each leg. That way they'll be kind of hidden, but it's gonna be a nice little standing sign here for my little pot of gold seashells. And this is how it turned out. Super fun, super quirky. Okay, our next DIY, look at these great vases that I got at the Dollar Tree. They're so coastal, so nautical. They've got like the rope or the twine tied around it in like a fishing net pattern. And they're so pretty. I went ahead and got two of them. I thought these would be, this is what it is, the vase with jute, if you were gonna try to find them at your store. They also have it wrapped around. You know, you could always DIY your own by tying a fishnet on the side, but how convenient that they're already like that, right? Now I wanna fill it with those beautiful shamrocks that you see there from the Dollar Tree and make some little St. Patrick's Day flower arrangements. I do need a little foam in there. Um, just to stick the plant down into. So I'm just cutting some little pieces of foam and putting those down in there. But otherwise we're gonna use some Dollar Tree sand. 
to fill in there and the foam won't be visible and it's gonna look nice and beachy. And I'm using the brown sand. You could always use the white sand. You know, I think they might even have green sand. Kind of putting a skewer in there just so I can kind of move that foam around make sure I get it in the right place. And don't do that. Don't spill sand everywhere like I did. And this is gonna be a great base for those shamrocks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here on the other side. I'm even gonna finish it off with some seashells just for fun. I, now I've gotten a funnel since then. Funnels work really well for that. <laughs> So we're gonna fill this one up with some sand as well. And then we're gonna clean up all of my sandy mess. <laughs> That's with a little ladybug vacuum. You know, my son ran off with that to clean his bearded dragon tank and he's never given it back. I guess I need to order a new one. So I'm just trying to make sure that each vase has about the same amount of sand in there. And then I thought we could put some of those little tiny cheese shells from the Dollar Tree in there. Just kind of scattering those around. Since it is clear glass, you'll be able to see in there a little bit. It'll be a nice little beachy touch. See, isn't that cute? Okay, these are the little shamrocks. They have two different kinds of these, I've noticed. They have these that are the plain green or they have the ones that have glitter on them. I chose the plain ones and we're just gonna stick two of them in each face. It's gonna fill it up really nicely, just sticking it down into that foam that I put in the center. And this is how they turned out. Here is one of them. Beautiful decoration for St. Patrick's Day. And it even has the coastal beachy touch with the sand, seashells, and the fishing net on the vase. I love that vase so much. Okay, our next DIY, I'm gonna use one of these little glitter shamrocks from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could recreate this and make it into a sand shamrock. So I'm carefully gonna try to pull out the hanger without causing too much damage there on the foam there at the top. And then I thought we would use that wood base that you see there, that little wood chunky circle as a base. And this will be like a standing um, shamrock. I did want to first paint it like the color of sand um, to kind of mask all that green glitter that's on there. And I'm just using cashew chalk paint just because I had it and it was about the same color as the sand I was going to use. At first, I was kind of hoping that the glitter would be bumpier and it would almost give it that sand appearance, but it really went on very smooth. That glitter they use at the Dollar Tree must be like really fine. I always laugh at myself every time I go to Dollar Tree shopping, which is all the time. Um, I always leave there with glitter all over myself and I always have to laugh because it looks like I'm wearing body glitter, but basically it's just a telltale sign that I've been at Dollar Tree. <laughs> because they love their glitter. So I'm just going over all the front and the sides here of our little shamrock and painting it that cashew color. It does seal all the glitter and kind of clean up the mess, but I can't really leave the back exposed like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the back as well. And if for anything else, it's gonna seal all that glitter away we can have a nice kind of blank canvas. Now this is a very lightweight um, shamrock, and so it's not gonna be super sturdy, um, but I'm gonna kind of just cut off the bottom, as you can see, just trying to cut it like that. Kind of wanted to fall apart on me, so I decided to use like a serrated knife to kind of cut through there a little bit smoother. And somebody was telling me the other day to use one of the foam noodle knives. I did buy one of those, but. I have no idea what I did with it because I can't find it now that I want to use it. So I thought, since it doesn't really look like sand at this point, we're just going to have to cover it with sand. And so I'm going to go over the shamrock with Mod Podge and use some of that brown Dollar Tree sand that we used on the last DIY for our little shamrocks and glue that all over. Painting it that color first, though, definitely helped because if there's any areas that aren't covered with sand, you're not really going to be able to tell. So just kind of working one section at a time. Mod Podge, you could always, always use school glue for this as well. Both work really well for sand. 
And make sure you put something down first to catch all that sand because you're going to waste a lot. Then I'm going to go over it with the spray glue, also from the Dollar Tree, and spray glue that to kind of secure that down, doing a second coat of sand. Now I also want the edges, so I'm going to go ahead and spray some of that adhesive on the edges and kind of touch those up as well to make sure that I get a little bit more sand attached to the edges. And just spraying and gluing more sand on there until I'm happy with it. I think this turned out really fun. It really does look like a shamrock made out of sand, like a little sand sculpture. Now this is the little wood circle that we're going to use for the base of that. I thought it was just about the right size and um, would work well for that. I'm going to fill in the little hole there with a little hanger with a little bit of spackle. And then I wanted to bring a little bit of green into this. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the base of this green. And this is like a leafy green, doesn't matter, whatever kind of green that you have. I usually like to work with acrylics because they are cheaper. And if you craft a lot like I do, the chalk paint can really add up. So a lot of times I will make my own chalk paint if I need it with some of that calcium carbonate that I get on Amazon. And I think the one that I normally use that's in my shop, the calcium carbonate, is not available right now. And so it doesn't really matter what brand you use. Just any of the calcium carbonate powder mixed with acrylic and you're going to have chalk paint. So I just screwed a screw in the middle to kind of give me something to attach the little shamrock to, carving out a little hole in the base of the shamrock and then kind of pooling hot glue over the little screw that I put on the base and then sitting the little shamrock on the base, waiting for that hot glue to dry. Whenever you're working with foam, it's gonna melt with the hot glue, but I think it's gonna be okay. Then I thought I should use some of this reindeer moss to kind of decorate that up a little bit, kind of give it a fun vibe. So I'm gonna just hot glue some of that reindeer moss on the base of this, just to give another little fun element to this DIY. And again, since this is made out of foam and sand, not real durable, um, you're not gonna wanna put this in a high use area, but it looked great on my shelf and it actually held up. I'm also going to um, glue some of that reindeer moss all the way around the edges as well. And I really like the combination of the sand and the reindeer moss. They look really fun and earthy together. And it just kind of makes it more like a finished product. So once I get it all on there, I use some more of that spray adhesive that we use for the sand to help glue that down. And here it is, our little sand shamrock for St. Patrick's Day. I love it. It's so much fun. I love covering anything in sand. <laughs> okay, our next DIY, I'm going to use one of these little frames from the Dollar Tree. Um, I liked it because it kind of had like a light wood frame on it. And it was about the right size that I wanted. I wanted to make a little kind of mossy shamrock sign. So this had like little hearts and different things on it to decorate it. So I'm just trying to remove all that to give myself kind of a blank canvas. And then I'm going to go over this with Mod Podge because what I'm going to do is cover the surface of that with sand. Now, I probably should have painted it like I did the sand shamrock first in that like tan color. Um, that way I would have got better coverage, but I'm just kind of pouring the brown sand in there and just kind of shaking it around pouring off the excess. So that's when I realized, you know, you probably should have painted that because now you've got to cover up all those words. <laughs> so you might want to paint it first. So I just sprayed some adhesive, put some more sand on there, gave it a quick dry, and I'm just going to have to keep doing that until I have good enough coverage on there. What I want to do is to do like a mossy shamrock with a sand background to do a fun little coastal St. Patrick's Day decoration. Just making sure I don't have any sand glued to the inside of the frame and patching any areas that still needed it. 
Now, whenever you work with sand like that, you gotta make sure that it is a pretty good and dry before you add anything else to it. Now, I thought it would be really fun to make a little mossy shamrock, and I thought I would use one of these little foam shamrocks from the Dollar Tree as a template. And actually one of those little Brillo pads from the Dollar Tree to make it kind of look like a mossy. I thought this would make a great like mossy shamrock. So I'm just gonna use that as a guide to cut the little Brillo pad down. I'm just gonna use like a white paint pen to kind of draw the shape on there. Something that's gonna be visible on that dark green color. But I can cut, kind of cut that part off. And it was just about the right size and then just using my scissors to cut out the Brillo pad. trying to cut off most of the white, but it doesn't really matter because I can always just use that side for the back. And it does kind of give you that mossy appearance, but with the use of a Brillo pad. I thought that was really fun and it actually worked out pretty well. It's just kind of trimming it up to make it look a little bit better once I get it cut out. And then I want to attach that to uh, the sand background. I do want it to be a standing sign though, so I'm gonna use one of those Jenga blocks. I always get those every spring at Five Below. They're great for crafting. And I glue one to the back to make a little stand for this frame. Now we can attach the little mossy shamrock here to the front. Just gonna use a thick layer of hot glue, pushing that down into the sand as much as I can to try to get that glued against the base of it. And it did not. So I'm gonna add more hot glue. This time really pushing it down. Cause if you just glue to the sand it is totally gonna fall off and that worked. Then I wanted to add just a few more beachy touches. So this is kind of a small project. So I'm using some of those little tiny shells. These are the ones that you get in the little bottles at Dollar Tree and just gluing some along the bottom just for fun. I also have some of these little tiny starfish. I get these on Amazon. I absolutely love them. And I have those linked in my shop as well. I'm just doing a little beachy border down here. It was pretty simple DIY, but it was nice and beachy and fun. And this is how it turned out. Our little Brillo pad, mossy shamrock. I really don't think you can tell that's what it's made out of. <laughs> it definitely has a fun mossy appearance with that sand background, looks really cute. It goes great with that DIY where we just made the sand shamrock as well. Okay, the next DIY is we're gonna DIY one of these little shamrock hats using some of the decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use the nine and a half foot. It's kind of the thinner rope. And the first thing is we're gonna just have to take all of this tensely stuff off the cage. It's gonna give us a great thing that we can DIY. And you'll laugh if you've watched my St. Patrick's Day coffee bar because I made almost exactly the same DIY in that video. <laughs> And when I made it, I said, I think I've made this DIY before. And look at this. I had made it, but it is going to be um, a little bit different. The coffee bar one, I used a black leather purse and um, DIY'd a green buckle. And so this one's going to be a little bit di different look, but it turned out just as cute. So you know the drill whenever you're working with the cages like this, you can just wrap it in Dollar Tree rope and get such a fun finished project. So just starting in the center of my cage, the top, gonna start gluing around in like a curly Q fashion, gluing to the plastic cage when needed. And we're just gonna keep going around and around and covering up this entire hat. I thought about not including this since I just did almost the same exact DIY in my copy bar video, but I thought I, I have another bonus one to throw in um, here at the end. This is DIY number 10, but I do have one more to show you too. So um, when you get to the end, you can just start and stop, 
just trying to glue that together as tightly as possible. And um, usually you won't be able to see the seam too much, but if you can, you can make sure all your seams are like on the back of your DIY, just working my way around and covering this with rope. You know a DIY is a good DIY when you make it twice. <laughs> so just going around the brim of the hat until all of the plastic cage is covered, gluing down the final rope. It looks so much better like that. I just love it. And now I have two of these. <laughs> but that's okay. It's kind of hard. There's not a lot of St. Patrick's Day um, decorations at Dollar Tree to craft with sometimes. So sometimes you got to work with what you can get. Now the bottom looks a little a mess. So I'm just going to kind of melt off some of that excess hot glue with my heat gun. Just kind of clean that up a little bit, but you're not going to be able to see down there anyway. And then just like with my little rope shamrock, I'm going to go around and burn off all the fuzzies with a lighter. Just kind of cleans it up, but this step is totally optional. Now I just need to decorate this little hat. I wanted to bring in a little green with this DIY because we're doing a lot of greens and browns on the shelf. And so I thought a little green strap would be perfect. I do have some green fabric left over from another DIY from the Dollar Tree. And I thought I would just cut down a strip. I'm going to kind of double it up, folding it together with both open seams on the back so that you won't be able to see those and no sew, right? Until it's just about the right size. And then we're just going to cut that down and glue that little strap around the leprechaun hat. And I do do a um, different kind of buckle on this one than I did on my coffee bar video the other day. If you haven't seen my St. Patrick's Day coffee bar video, you should go check it out. A lot of really fun St. Patrick's Day DIYs. And up next, I'm probably going to do um, St. Patrick's Day tear trays because all my tear trays are empty right now with Valentine's being over. Oh, no, I still have my winter one but not for long. Now I came with a little um, paper buckle on there. I'm gonna kind of use that as a template and I'm gonna use some of this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree with a little zigzag pattern on it. I love all these little burlap ribbons from the Dollar Tree. I think they're so cute. And just using that as reference to know exactly the size to cut the ribbons down. I cut four pieces to do four sides of the buckle and then we're just gonna hot glue those on. It looked really good with the rope and the burlap buckle. They just go really nicely together. Just a quick, easy DIY and fun for St. Patrick's Day. Doesn't have to be a coastal theme on this one, but it looks really nice with it. So just another little variation and the little rope leprechaun hat. You know, if I'm gonna take something from the Dollar Tree, we're gonna wrap it with some rope. We're gonna make it look nautical and make it look so much better. And I like the little buckle on that. I think it turned out really cute. Okay, here's my bonus number 11. I found this little rainbow felt garland in the party section at the Dollar Tree. And I thought it would make a perfect garland for St. Patrick's Day because they are like the colors of the rainbow. So I'm just gonna use twine to kind of go with my coastal feel and just start stringing these up. I think they're so cute. I'm gonna kind of do like the colors of the rainbow if I don't use some colors, that's fine. Just red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And I love these. I think they're really cute. They're real, kind of a small size for a banner, but they're absolutely perfect for what I needed. So you can always kind of um, rearrange those as needed for spacing. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that pattern. Basically, I'm using every color that was included except for the pink. And I didn't count this as a DIY because not a lot of DIYing here, just kind of stringing up what they already have at the Dollar Tree. And this is how it looks at the top of my St. Patrick's Day decorations. And that is our last DIY. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I do have an announcement to make though. I have introduced memberships on my channel. 
And for $4.99 a month, you can support Crafty Beach Channel and become a member. You can cancel any time, but what it's going to give you is a few perks like early access to my videos, custom badges and emojis and such. And I would love if you joined our membership. Okay, here's the final reveal. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my day. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at fools. No, I don't care because I am on my way up. And I won't stop. I won't slow down. Steady on my feet. I'm going to rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. know what it's like to be broke I know what it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down I'm strolling down the street with all of my favorite songs on repeat. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. And I don't care if you spill coffee on me or if the sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care because I am on my way up. And I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm going to rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. I know what it's like to be broke, yeah And I know what it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down <laughs> Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down Instead of the concrete, I'm dancing through Everything's about to come my way Nothing can ruin my day No matter what anyone does or say I smile at fools No, I don't care cause I am on my way Up and I won't stop I won't slow down Steady on my feet, I'm gonna rise Up, no I won't stop It is my time I know what it's like to be broke I know what it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down I'm strolling down the street with all of my favorite songs on repeat. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. And I don't care if you spill coffee on me or if the sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't stop. 
stop, I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. Cause I know what it's like to be broke, yeah. I know what it's like when nothing goes your way. So I'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day. Yeah, I am on my way. 